OK, thank you. Um, I could also have titled this one uh, right after lunch as On the Important of Leaving the Buffet. Um, so um, I have looked at the program of previous conferences, and there's a lot of talk also on other conferences about how do you join open source projects, how do you make contributor experience great. Um, and the thing that I'm sometimes lacking is um, how do you leave? And it just happens to be that I left my open source project, and I thought this might be a good moment to just sum up um, my experiences. Um, also, I'm more than glad that when I entered the door, there was someone from the Joomla project just talking about how they do succession planning. So um, maybe use them as a template and not the project that I'm talking about. So first of all, who am I? I'm Florian. I'm the managing director of First Systems and its subsidiary critical section. Um, the mission of those companies is bringing Rust to the industry, the programming language. Um, and some of the activities that might be of relevance here is that we are building the open source Rust IDE Rust Analyzer and um, the uh, embedded flashing toolkit Nerling. Why are they interesting? We're funding them in a way that we don't need to cross fund through our customer business, but rather that our those are built with a commitment to the community, and they're fiscally sound for us to build for the years to come, because on something as crucial as this, I believe that's important. You can find me on Twitter, you can find me on GitHub, and I've been part of a lot of non-development projects, particularly running a number of conferences, and being involved in those, being part of Open Tech School here in Berlin. Um, I've been on the board of Ruby Berlin, and particularly I've been part of the Rust project since 2015 as part of the community team and as part of the core team, and I've seen the growth of that project from 200 to around 300 members nowadays, and I'm one of the co-founders of a Rust Foundation, all of which I'm not a member anymore. I have not left them all at once. Um, <laughs> so obviously, especially the conferences were a rather temporary things. Um, so I left all of them, and I definitely feel better for it. And what's of particular importance, the projects are better for it. And that also means people who filled my roles now have a chance to shine. And a lot of these projects are still healthy. And even at places where I say, oh, OK, I wouldn't have pulled this off. <laughs> but others did. Um, one thing that's not as visible is that during my time in the core team of the Rust project, I actually helped other people leaving. That's, uh, I think, the more interesting thing to talk about. And especially, I found three things there that I think are harmful, but I understand why they are there. Um, particularly whenever chatting with someone about their intention to leave or their hidden desire to leave, which was also um, sometimes a problem, uh, is three things an overestimation of negative effects, fear of actually leaving their post and moving uh, on, an underestimation of positive effects, kind of an insecurity for the future, and a lack of structural support, all of which we can address if we know about them. So I'd actually like to start with the point that I think leaving must be a positive experience. And this talk is successful if either it makes some people leave their project and feel good about it, or have some people stay on their project and be more confident about it, or helping others to do either of the above. Um, because probably we've all seen this dreaded email that comes in somewhere around Tuesday and suddenly, one of the leading project man uh, members says, oh, by the way, with a heavy heart, I'm gone tomorrow. And that has a history that probably started a month earlier, and it should never happen. It happens. I'm actually the first person, I would like to say that on stage, that has left the core team non abrupt um, Because I didn't want this to happen, and the first thing I think is not make it happen to me. So, but why, why is it that people push out this discussion for so long? Because I think that is, that is the problem. It's like people run across the moment where they should leave to the point where it's just not bearable anymore. And I, to my reading, the reasons to not leave are diffuse fears and some personal beliefs. And it's completely uninteresting in this discussion whether these things are actually true or whether the person just perceives it. Um, that doesn't matter. It's their personal view. And the first thing is shame, just simply shame. The feeling of failing others when leaving the post. You still have things on your plate, things unfinished. There's 
always more to do, and that will never go away, but often people are not aware of, because once they've got one thing down, then another thing will be open and unfinished. And also, particularly when we're talking about diversity, people from underrepresented groups also often have the feeling that if they leave, they leave their group underrepresented, and that is also something in that context that we need to help them out with. Also, obligations towards friends. Um, I read this interesting study in which pointed out that open source relationships are often longer, for example, than your colleagues at work. So you, you work in a project, you switch employers, but kind of like your open source peers stay the same. And there's often an intermingling between the work you do together and also friendships. So some people perceive their open source project as a friendship circle, and that is to an extent also true. So leaving may feel like leaving a circle of friends um, and under that perspective, it's helpful if that circle of friends actually expresses, hey, if we leave the project, we're still friends. And pretty often I've seen things like a skewed self image. Um, this is perfectly normal. Um, I joined a group for assistance around entrepreneurs assisting each other a couple of years ago. And the patterns there are always the same. People in high leadership positions, Someone, it's always said it's lonely at the top, often have a problem with feedback loops, and that leads to a skewed self-image. So, for example, the overestimation of what your share in a large organization actually is. In an organization uh, uh, like the Rust project currently, I would estimate my share at 1 300th. Everything else is inappropriate, I would say. It's a good guess. Probably for some people, it's more for some people, it's less, uh, also given personal resources. Um, but it, the largest open source projects nowadays are tankers, not speedboats. And the other thing that comes along with it is that still there's often the feeling, I have this one aspect that no one else cares about, and if I'm gone, no one cares about that. A, if that's true, if the crowd friend there, well, somebody definitely needs to fix that, it doesn't have to be you. And sometimes it just stays broken until someone picks it up. So what will actually break if you leave? And I can share about the Rust project. I have left and nothing broke. Some of the things that I would like fixed are still broken, but it doesn't matter. Um, that, and also the thing uh, that thinking that one has a certain mastery that will make a dent that actually goes both ways. I had a very odd dynamic in the Rust community team with the number of projects that I have under my belt. I had the problem in leadership that a lot of people would not do anything without Florian giving it my go. In the sense of, hey, Florian has tons more experience. It's only good if Florian says yes. The appropriate thing to do in that situation is leave and actually cut off the option of asking you for everything. The community team in Rust still does fine just without me. I think it actually does better since I'm not there anymore. Um, and the last thing, an overestimated loss of influence. Um, and I can definitely share that was a little bit of a problem for me, and I come back to that in the sense of I do run a business in that space. I need some control over that project where also Amazon and Microsoft and a lot of other companies that are quite openly in for control are in that, but the experience is my loss of influence is pretty marginal. People still know me. People still, uh, still know me for what I do. I actually think the current structural positioning I'm in is better. And the last one, structural issues. Um, projects often have structures to gain contributors. They rarely have one to leave. I'm happy to hear that uh, some of them have them. And that comes the other problem. A lot of leadership in open source, and I think this is actually something someone was asking for, where do we spend a billion? I think actually structured leadership education would be a good thing to start with, um, just for the reason that there's a ton of effort and experience needed to just have that conversation with a contributor. Hey, your contribution is dropping. It's getting problematic. It's like, can we talk about it in a positive way, actually, in your interest? That's classic leadership skills that people are often not trained for when they join the project as a programmer. And that's absolutely not a 
personal flaw or a mistake of them, but something we also need to assist our leaders with. And the final thing, external ghosts. Um, fear that the community assumes hidden motives. You probably read the news. The last year for the Rust project wasn't the nicest one. Um, there's been some internal infighting. And um, when I was leaving, a huge question was, how do I make sure that my intention to leave, um, which I'm getting into, it was, is, does, has nothing to do with that. Um, and the other thing, fear of being judged. Um, so any kind of insecurity around drawing the public image. What does it do to my stage personality? And for a project, there's also a lot to gain in this. Why to make leaving great? Um, contributors that leave in a good mood um, will talk favorably about you and be friends in the industry and so on. They will still be around, maybe help from time to time. Maybe they even go to a position in a company where they actually have budgets. <laughs> Suddenly you have a friend with a budget. Um, and any successful larger project that I've seen, Kubernetes, Rust, Node, whatever, forms this kind of friend circle around that are not really involved anymore. But if you are in need, you can still approach them. And obviously, people who left in good faith may come back. When the leaving was a happy experience, it's actually more likely that they may come back and may have some time to support their successors. So how do we make this happen? And I think it's important as a first step that we don't go too far and actually start normalizing the discussion. People leave. And that starts with all of us. So for example, I've seen it in the Ruby community. I've left the Ruby community together with my friend Steve Klabnik, who is also a very notable person. And I was literally asked the question, what does Ruby do if Steve and Florian are gone? It's going to do just fine the next day. So not allowing that discussion, like not making the too large of heroes out of people is very important, and also continuing within the project, making it clear that anyone within the Rust project can leave, and we will do fine. So putting it in the handbox, addressing it at meetings, making open the conversation, hey, does someone intend to leave within the next half year? What's your personal situation? Do you think you can go on? And all of these kind of things. And normalizing discussions also makes sure that it's easier to open yourself up um, to them because someone else did it before you or things like that. And actively set standards on how to leave. That was the big mistake that I think we made is I think if you accept a core team position in a project that is as large as a 300-person project, it comes with a certain amount of commitment. And I think it is the project's job to clearly communicate to people who take such positions, this is how we expect you to leave. It can't be from... And it can't be from yesterday to tomorrow. One thing I put here is don't model that around emergencies. There's always emergencies when people need to leave and all of these kind of things. But the structure, like the standard case, should have rules around it and give support. So assign a peer to have all of those discussions before with. Like what's, how do you intend that to go? What's the story we want to, uh, we want to tell? What's the most important reason you're leaving? And actively, as any kind of leader, team lead, um, approach your peers and support them. And it has been very interesting in the Rust project. We had a number of team leads leaving and a number of team leads join in the, uh, in the teams. How the team leads who manage the 300-person project are far more involved in having these discussions than the team leads who have grown the 20-person project or the 50-person project. So it's also important that you rotate during the growth of the project because a person who makes a 20-person project fly is a quite different skill set from someone who makes a 300-person project with a foundation attached and everything <laughs> fly. And the other thing, that's been, always been a thing that uh, I represented in the Rust project, copy as much as you can. Don't invent your own. There's structure, there's classic things around this, there's approaches in the industry, there's coaches around that can help you with that. One thing that we found, a lot of what I talked about is a lot of emotional labor, and there's a hesitance in volunteers to actually engage in that. For, on first iteration, 
they say, like, I'm already doing that with my family. Why should I do it for my open source project? I expect from my open source project um, that it doesn't expect emotional labor from me. The problem is we are social circles. That demand is not possible. So making sure that we have people around, they are supported and recognized for the contribution that do this kind of work is incredibly important. On the personal side, though, so, um, it's always been helpful to me to always have a plan in the sense of, if I wanted to leave, I've got this plan here, and I'll do it this way. Communicate that plan to your team early. The ability to execute it as at any time is an enabler for feeling good during the volunteer engagement. So that's the point of be more confident in staying. And you have the ability, and I should have done that way earlier to set standards there. Don't leave it in a rush. Give time. Don't leave at a uh, breaking point. Leave before the breaking point. So this kind of look ahead of, OK, I'm going to need six months to do this, so I should find the point six months out when I'm running out of steam or when I actually have something else to do. And one thing that's crucial is having a circle of trust and being very confident about, this is about me. <laughs> this is where I'm going, and no one else has a say in that. And the other part is, OK, where do I go? Having a plan for the future. What's my personal reason for leaving? What am I going to do after that? A little bit of retrospective. What have I actually achieved? Um, instead of talking about what's still broken. So working on one's own insecurity is a thing that, with help of others, can only be done by myself. And what has helped me is finding the simplest, most important reason to leave. Because if I made the whole list, I would probably find 100. But there's probably just one or two that actually uh, make the decision happen. So why did I leave? Um, first of all, resolving structural tensions. I was at a point by the end of the last year, board member of the Rust Foundation, representing the Rust core team. I was a Rust core team member and a managing director of the largest independent Rust firm at the same time. I could have negotiated deals with myself. Um, and a lot of discussions with all of those parties are much better since everyone knows in a call, OK, I'm just running a company here. <laughs> um, I still have all the context. Everyone still knows uh, the directions that I'm getting at, but I, I, it's clear which party I'm speaking for. And I see my contribution as being more effective elsewhere. So my time spent is just way more effective on where I'm currently at than before. Um, Something else is just more fulfilling, and I come to that. And also making space for others, even if I don't know them yet. There's now new core team members, all the people have also left. Um, I know some of them, some of them a little. And yeah, and just allowing new faces and managing patterns has been hugely helpful. And finally, personal well being. That's actually, um, I, I think I couldn't have gone much longer in that kind of situation where I always need to explain where this sentence, out of which of my hats this sentence actually comes from. Um, and executing on that plan was an exercise in drawing that story together with my project and make a joint announcement that was clear on both sides uh, what the reasons were. Um, being very open to criticism of your communication. Hey, Florian, this is not what I would tell, and this is actually not true, and this is where you're over <laughs> presenting your own contributions. That is all feedback that needs to be taken, particularly never lie. So if you're leaving for a bad reason, I would recommend state it um, very clearly. So this is a PR exercise in <laughs> a PR sense, but in the interest of both parties to make sure that also, um, both parties are not harmed further, even, for example, if it's for a bad reason, in my case it wasn't, um, that also in those kind of senses this is um, under control. Um, and examples for things that I've seen just over the past years in the project are s these small kinds of moves, even people just leaving the core team for and had a hesitance to actually leave the core team for all the reasons that I stated, moving back to an individual pro uh, contributor in the project, leaving the project altogether. I talked about this. And yeah, stepping down from any kind of leadership position, becoming a contributor again. Um, so what did I leave? Um, I left the huge privilege that comes once in a lifetime to have a look at a programming language and following it from early research to, uh, to widespread in the industry just over six years. Um, I don't think that 
we are going to see that in the next coming years, at least not in a way where I can <laughs> be part of that. Um, my positions allowed me to influence the whole structure around the Rust project fundamentally in how its community works, um, in how its policies towards the community works, on how that has been one of the things that I've been working on, making sure that it's a reliable partner to industries. And I think that's a huge cornerstone of its success, all of which, just to be clear, I've not been alone in and had other people in the project that helped on that. And it's now a tanker. So if I leave, that will go on. Like all of those relationships bind you, and people understand why they are there. All our sponsors and all of this. And what I left towards is actually, <laughs> I'm now managing a joint venture to, together with a larger company, AdaCore, to bring Rust into uh, safety critical environments, spaceflight, avionics, cars. Uh, motor controls. So I'm still growing Rust somewhere, but this takes 100% of my time. And that's the very blunt reason of if I added a fourth group to the three groups I already mentioned, um, well, we'd not be seeing any of my influence in the next coming month. And so how did I leave? Just boring. I left by the end of the year last year. Um, the attention was announced in June 2021 to the core team, so we actively, they could actively start talking about successes and changes in the team. Um, we announced the, I announced the exact date to the core team and the foundation by September, sent a farewell email somewhere in January, and then there was public communication in February. It's also very useful that we got our project used to having an all at email address that you can send mails to, where people are actually confidential about and do not leak, um, because that means I can openly communicate towards my project, to all of the project, um, without any kind of fear about public perception. And there we are. That's the end of my talk. And if we still have time, questions, experiences, more than happy to. Thank you very much, Florian. Um, yeah, I think we still, we, yeah, we started a bit late, but I think it's time still for, for some questions. So. What are your thoughts on leaving a position where you have not been able to determine the succession plan, where no one steps up? Um, center yourself. Um, if it breaks, it breaks, but it's uh, not your, ch your job to keep the world turning. Yeah. It's, a, it's probably the bros most brutal of these kinds of decisions, but yeah, in the end, what's best for you? Um, how do you think this, these principles relate to when you are leaving both a job that is tied to an open source project? In other words, you're automatically a contributor because it's your job, and now you're both resigning but automatically stepping away from the community. Do you think that's a different process? or? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so. I mean, it, it's kind of hidden in there. The reason why I left the foundation's board was actually because I was representing core. So res resigning from my project position meant my immediate resignation from the foundation, which I have co-built, um, which was probably the tougher decision there. It's like it's a, I've been involved in the whole build-up, the whole financing, budgeting, early sponsoring, getting all the sponsors together, and so on and so forth. But then yielding all say on this <laughs> was a pretty big one. I'm, uh, I'm one thing that the Rust project has, and maybe that's a, not quite answering your question, uh, but uh, one thing that the Rust project has is that deliberately for those reasons, the Rust project is not managed by the Rust Foundation. So the Rust Foundation cannot assign people to posts on the teams. And that disconnect is deliberate. And that's also something that happens within companies so that actually this situation cannot happen. Um, you leave your job at the foundation, but you could still retain your post in the project because they're deliberately not interconnected. So that's where I would see the problem. But for the actual situation, I've never been in it, so I have no advice or experiences. <laughs> Very sorry for that. 
And we have a question uh, from the online platform. Um, in stepping down from a leadership position to contributor, how do you avoid taking too much authority with you, or how do you avoid undermining your successes? Oof. Okay. Um, I've done the mistake. Um, I'm very open about that. The reason why Eurocamp doesn't happen anymore in Berlin is because I stepped down in 2014, and then the old leadership team had opinions whether it should be continued after 2015. That uh, was inappropriate and a mistake. So for me, <laughs> what helped me was making that mistake and seeing the outcomes of it. Um, it's, a, it's an exercise in restraint. Um, it, I think one of the things that helps is being in active touch with the new leader and being very vocal about, I have no opinion on this, or I would like to have this to be your decision. So this very active move of that's your decision. Um, this is one thing that I think someone sees everywhere, like that is actually a problem that we, that we struggled in the Rust project with. Uh, the core team in the Rust project has deliberately tried to not even build that authority it's externally perceived as such, but for example, um, I've been in the situation where I would have liked to, in, to tell the release team to release something, but I actually didn't have the authority. And how did that work within the project? Always this kind of active communication, like very vocally saying, that's not my decision anymore. And that also helps me on my side of remembering that I yielded this authority <laughs> by actively saying, I don't have the authority anymore, and you can't even get my opinion on this because I know it would influence your decision. OK, any more questions? In that case, thank you, Florian. Thank you very much. Thank you.